Oh, sugar honey iced tea. It's the EAC show. Good day, ladies and gents. I'm Emilio A. Colon. And I am Marcus Mack, and this is the EAC show coming to you live from sunny South Florida. This is episode 40. I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in for these 40 episodes. Well, the 40th one, 39 episodes. Uh, today is EAC Headlines Wednesday. Um, we got a lot of stuff lined up for you guys, man. How you been, Emilio? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Enjoyed the day. Had a good time. We're, in, we're now in phase one of this beautiful state of Florida being opened up. Unfortunately, Broward and Dade County will be opened up next week. Uh, where we got limited capacity stuff, but we're going to get into that a little bit later on. Marcus, Marcus Mack, why don't you tell them what's the list on today's EAC headlines and the topics? Well, uh, today we start in with something I love to talk about, boxing. Evander Holyfield is back. Um, then we're going into Major League Baseball. Uh, you know, the, the, these states like Florida and Arizona is opening up. And we're going to talk about some of the other, other states that we feel like is going to uh, start opening the floodgates. Um, then we have T.Y. Hilton. He wants to finish his career with the Colts. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, and something that's like <laughs> that the whole, uh, the whole world's been talking about, if you love football, this, this funny looking uh, <laughs> logo for the Rams. <laughs> Yeah, um, Eric Dickinson said it looks like two bananas. On, on I can't, I can't wait, I can't wait to get into that. It's gonna be hilarious. Right, and then our last headline for the day: um, somebody was robbed at knife point. <laughs> I, just thought, I just thought that was funny. That whole part was funny. So, um, so the Tottenham Spurs, it, which is, a, uh, I think it's an, it's an English English team. Yes, it's an English soccer team. English soccer team. Okay, so Deli Ali of the uh, Tottenham Spurs was robbed at knife point. <laughs> I can't wait to laugh. Crazy. So listen, Marcus Mack, we've been big on the Mike Tyson comeback here on the EAC show on our oh. Instagram page. We've, we've literally, you know, made videos about it, spoke about it. Man, even before this comeback talk was, was, was uh, announced about Mike Tyson coming back, we did a video dissecting Mike Tyson's knockout, Marcus Mack, you and myself. Yeah. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Just because we're huge fans. Definitely. And, I mean, you being a Brooklyner, I know how much, you know, Mike Tyson means, means to, to me. you. Yeah, yes. so, yeah, you know, uh, we, we are we going into the event, the Holyfield video? So we're going to go into the event, the Holyfield. I was letting it build up a little bit. So we're getting so much excitement from Mike Tyson where I felt like, and not for nothing, Listen, Evander Holyfield is a great heavyweight. He's a, he's a Hall of Famer, without a doubt. I felt like Evander Holyfield training video was a dud in comparison to what we saw with Mike Tyson. Can you, can you bring the mop bucket, please? <laughs> listen, I, yo, listen. I want everyone to understand, those of you that's, that's listening on, um, on Apple Music, or if you could just hear me and you're not looking at it on, on, uh, on, on YouTube. YouTube. Um, I'm going to show this for all the people looking on YouTube. So if you, you're listening, go make sure you check it out on YouTube because I'm going to show this video. It looks nothing like the Mike Tyson at 53. Evander Holyfield looks nothing like, a, like, a, like, a, like, like Mike Tyson. Like if, they wind up fighting, if they wind up fighting, they put him in the ring, I can guarantee you he won't have to bite off that air again. God, God bless him. I mean, it is his first week of training. I think Mike is a little bit further along in his training, so he looks a lot better. But you can't put out product like that. Like, you can't. You have more than ample time to edit the video, make sure it's the best clips that you put out. Mike Tyson put out a blockbuster summer movie on Instagram. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then, and then you know, Evander Holyfield dropped a uh, Amazon Prime TV yeah. series that no one watches. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Shout out to their marketing team, though, for releasing that. I think it was all part of the strategy. So, yeah. But it's not like it's not like they're fighting for the title or he's going to go after. You know, it's not like one of those things. You would think that you would put out the best work possible. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody's watching. And it's like a Vander Holyfield, man. You really look like somebody's dad. And it's... 
Yeah, I mean, he, he looked, he looked, he, he looked nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing. Nowhere near as vicious as Mike looked in those videos. But I mean, God bless him. I'm happy for both of them to try to come back. I mean, it's not easy being that old and doing it. Like, shout outs to them for, for, for sitting there doing it. But if you ask me, just off videos alone, Mike could kill him. You remember uh, on Martin when he had got the willy lump lump? <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a Vander Holyfield with the willy lump lump. Wow. I mean, don't, don't get it twisted. There's nothing right now going on to watch these guys and that comeback actually happen. And the amount of money that they would make if they actually fought would be astronomical. So it's a no-brainer. Yeah, definitely, for sure. I, I, can't, I can't wait to see it. So going into our next headline is uh, Major League Baseball. Uh, Major League Governor, Baseball. Governor Ducey of the state of Arizona says that Major League, that, uh, Major League Sports – a welcome into Arizona as of Friday. So um, you can look forward to um, seeing sports coming out of Arizona and Florida. Now, I know we're in Florida, and uh, <laughs> Mr. Ron DeSantis has our been, great, Our great governor. Our, our great, great governor, governor <laughs> has been so adamant about this, everything from... Um, you know, from Vince McMahon and making sure that he, you know, he could meet those. Yo, people, Dana White, Dana White, right now, as we're recording this, has a fight going on tonight, right now, right now as we speak. Listen, he's 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 trying to make sure that the great state of Florida brings in that 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 revenue. He's trying to make sure that. So for all the other states, well, what other states uh, is supposed to be following suit? I think Texas. Yeah, I think I think from what I'm hearing from my people that are telling me, Texas is the next state that's going to announce probably that they're opening up to all sports. Um, it's it's big on Major League Baseball's part because Major League Baseball's idea for some of these states that are heavily heavily coronavirus uh, uh, effective, like New York, Seattle, Washington, you know, California, stuff like that, they can't play in those states. They, there's no way, shape, or form. So you got other states like Arizona, Florida, and Texas that are sitting there saying, hey, we don't have this problem as much. Come here. Come play. We're good. We're opened up. It's, it's more than welcoming for you to come here. So if you're having trouble in your state, come here. We'll figure out a way to make it happen. And you know what? This is just amazing for baseball because in all actuality, baseball already has a setup to where they have spring training facilities in Florida. They have spring training facilities in Arizona. Texas would just literally be like a middle for, for the rest of the league, pretty much in a sense. So you could literally just divide the league into Florida and Arizona if you had to and had Texas as a neutral site just in case something happens. So I think, you know what, this is very, very good for baseball going forward. Yeah, well, uh, Governor DeSantis is saying that um, he's specifically soccer, baseball, basketball bringing that to the great state of Florida. Shout out yeah, to Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he, he's smart. He's not dumb. He's smart. He's sitting there saying, look, we could capitalize on this. He doesn't see the Knicks playing in New York. He doesn't see the Brooklyn come Nets playing down. in. Come on down. Come, come, yeah. come here. We're going to have plenty of stadiums that will have capacity to be able to fit you in. Hockey teams, listen, if the, you know, if the NHL team has to go away and play in a state that they can play in, Hats off to them, and if then somebody else can fit you here. If we can't fit you, we'll bring in some ice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, we, business wise, I think it's a great move, but I still, you know, he said specifically, you know, we can do this in a safe way. Yeah, of course. So, you know, um, I just, I just want to see how they, how they're gonna pull it off. You know, the last thing I want to see is, you know, a second wave. Of um of the coronavirus, all of our families was affected. Um, Absolutely, you know, in some way, shape, or form. So you know, I would hate to see in in the in the, in the name of um, I I don't want to say in the name of sports because we can all agree this is about money. You know what I'm saying, of course. but uh, I mean, there has there has to be some type of economic movement when it comes to corporations that are that big. Because if there isn't, then the trickle down effect is too is too disastrous. Yes. So in all actuality, you need baseball, you need basketball, you need 
uh, football. You need you need all these sports to somewhat get going because if you don't get these sports going in some way, shape, or manner to lower the amount of money that these people are going to end up losing because every sport overall is going to lose money in some way, shape, or form. You're just trying to cut the deficit on how much you end up losing so you can sit there and say it's not that much in comparison to the overall picture. For example, it's much more difficult for Major League Baseball to go to the players and tell them they need to take pay cuts when in all actuality, that's something that's never discussed with baseball. Never discussed at all. Players will get their bread no matter what because they have the strongest player union in the world. But it becomes a harder fight if you're not making an effort to at least get back on the field safely because the owners will sit there and say, now you have to take a pick because there's no other choice. Right, 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 right. Well, I definitely, I, I agree. I agree with that. Business-wise, I think, you know, it's a, it's a great move. But like I said, as far as getting fans back in the seats, as far as that part, I don't see that happening probably till next year, Marcus Mack, honestly. Okay. Maybe, maybe, just maybe the Super Bowl will probably be the first event, in my opinion, to have fans at it. And that won't be until 2021 in February. Because I really doubt any other sports activity is going to be able to have fans in the seats this year. Yeah, this this pandemic, it sure does got, it, it sure does have me on my toes because if I even feel a tingle in my throat, I'm <laughs> bothered. Anything, I don't want to touch nothing. I don't want to be bothered. You never, you never had so many oranges in your house in your life. Ever, huh? ever, ever. Every, you know, I'm, I, I love making smoothies with the fruits and all that. Every smoothie I'm putting emergency in it. I'm constantly spraying my hands with the alcohol. It's like, oh my God. Jesus. If well, I'm listen, I hope. Here, and I, I just don't take my daughter at all because she touches everything. She has to stay in the house. It's uh man. I hope I hope Arizona opening up. Florida is now opened up. So we got two states out of the box. So hopefully Major League Baseball will start figuring out how to get this done. I'm pretty sure they're going to end up doing it in two spring training facilities in Florida and Arizona. But everybody having spring training facilities there and just play out games there in a safety manner, make sure everybody's okay. Um. This part of the show is brought to you by our sponsor, El Cubano Sandwich Shop. Use the promo code EAC and receive di discounts on online pickups or delivery orders. Enjoy a cafe con leche or that natural pre-workout shot of that Cuban coffee to start your day. The daily lunch specials and their steak sandwich is next level. Once again, use the promo code EAC. That's ElCubanoSandwichShop.com or 954-906-5110. Remember, use the promo code EAC. And that's El Cubano Sandwich Shop in Call Springs. Marcus Smack, I know we got the EAC headlines coming yeah, through so, all day. Now we got the back half of it. Why don't we get to the back half of it? Yeah, so uh, the Colts wide receiver, T.Y. Hilton, right? he wants to finish, finish his career out, final season, uh, final deal with the Colts. Um, so you, Dad, I'm going to put this on your table. You talk about this. Do I think the coach should pay T.Y. Hilton? T.Y. Hilton has been a very, very productive wide receiver for the Colts, regardless of who the quarterback has been, whether it's Andrew Luck, whether it's Brian Hoyer, whether it's Jacoby Brissett, whether it's uh, now going to be Phillip Rivers. In my opinion, if T.Y. Hilton doesn't ask for top wide receiver money, a la Julio Jones, a la DeAndre Hopkins, a la... Uh, Mari Cooper or anything like that, I say pay the man. He's been on the field. He's been productive. He's been the thoroughbred player that you want, never been in trouble, clean nose guy, brings his cleats to the field on practice days, on Sundays, Thursdays, and sometimes even Saturdays if they're in the playoffs. So I don't have a problem with signing T.Y. Hilton and making him a coat for life. I have a problem with it if they're asking him for the max, if they're asking the coach for max amount of money, because I don't see T.Y. Hilton as being one of those top five wide receivers in the league, Marcus Mack. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's his, his contract for this, for, this last, for this last season, it was affected because of the coronavirus, right? I would, I, I would think so. I, I don't necessarily know. Maybe it's possible. They, they probably just 
put the contract talks on the back end because of the because coronavirus. Of, right, right, right. Yeah, but um, it, it's kind of weird because, like I said, T.Y. Hilton doesn't seem like somebody that's going to ask for, you know, 18, 16, 15 million dollars a season. T.Y. Hilton looks like the type of receiver that'd be like, look, give me three years, 36 million dollars, guarantee me 24 of the 36, and we good to go. Like, he's straight yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's okay. Like I said, he doesn't, he, he doesn't get in trouble. He keeps his nose clean. You don't hear about him off the field. He's literally been a very, very durable wide receiver in Indianapolis, so I have absolutely no problem with them I signing. I think his main thing, his main thing really is just dying blue and white, man. That's hey, really his thing. that's okay. That's okay, Marcus. There's not too many people like that. Damn, look at Tom Brady. Tom Brady just left and went to Tampa Bay. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, some people got to do what they got to do, and T.Y. is one of them that say, look, let's make it happen because there's no reason for me to go anywhere else. Yeah. Definitely, I agree. I but now, agree. Marcus, we talked about this in the pre-show. I know you big on this one right here. This one was funny to you when we were talking about it. And I was trying to remind you, save it for the show. So let's get into the next one. Um, okay, so the, the, the Rams, they reveal their, their uniforms and, you know, the new logo and everything. So here was my thing, right? I love the blue because I, I love the world blue. Um, is or is it metallic blue? Is that's a, no metallic chrome? I think the helmet is metallic blue. I don't know necessarily know if the the uniforms are. I think the uniforms are royal blue. Royal blue, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, I liked it, but I kind of didn't. There was a there was a lot of you know there was a lot of talks about it saying it looked like a Kia sign. Um, <laughs> 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 Eric, they, Eric do, Dickinson. They, they do look like I. They listen. They do look like IKEA workers. Yeah, Eric Dickinson said it, 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 the the helmet looks like two bananas. You know what I'm saying, I yo listen. Um, I mean, what what can you say really? I, um, on the the there's one of them where the where the color where the, the 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 numbers change colors a little bit, like it's white on the bottom and it goes in the yellow. But we've been talking about this 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 uh this logo change from the beginning when they yeah, left yeah, yeah. Uh, St. Louis. It got it got it got leaked a couple months back, and we really didn't like it. Now, mind you, I have to give them credit, Marcus Mack, and you agreed with me with me this on the pre-show that their helmets look dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The helmets look good the way you know it it looks on there, but the rest of the uniform does look like they are IKEA workers, oh, and all you have to do is put the name on the back. On the, the name on the front, and it'll be just like "Hi, Bob." Like that, yeah, that's it, what it really it looks, looks like. It looks a little plain, and for the the attempt with the new uniforms is to rebrand. I think they could have went a little harder. You know what I'm saying I, mean, I they, didn't notice they, lo- they definitely lost to the Chargers. And if you want to pull up the Chargers new uniform, if you're looking at it, Marcus Mack, the Chargers new uniforms is dope. That came out a couple months back. But they definitely they 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 landed flat on this. I'll give them an A for the helmet design and how it looks and how fly it looks. But the rest of the uniform is just it looks like it's, it's just cheap and it doesn't look that good at all. Well, I mean, it, anyone who's been following the show, they know I'm big on jerseys. I might not be big on uh, on uh, on sports too much. But you're gonna stop saying that. I'm gonna tell you why you're gonna stop saying that. Cause you're getting better and better, sir. Yeah, getting I mean, better and better. I mean, yeah, because I I have no choice. I have no choice. <laughs> and, but um, like I really like the Chargers jerseys, the uh, the old the old school ones, and these new ones are, like really really dope. So I mean, you know, because the, the strap here, see the throwback ones hold the arm, and I like that, just for style, you know. But uh, yeah, for 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 swag purposes, I wouldn't be purchasing a um. A Rams, a Rams jersey? A Rams jersey, no. Nah, you wouldn't be purchasing a Rams. You know, the, you know the famous saying, look good, play good? Play good, feel good? Pay good? All that good play, stuff? Play good, feel, that's, yeah. That's how, right, right, right. That's how it goes, man. That's how it goes. So, Marcus Mack, we got our last topic on the EAC show before we close out this EAC headline Wednesday. And um, this one is kind of like, what the hell is going on in the world type Yeah, topic. yeah. I, I mean, I've... Maybe seen this on movies, but the guy with the knife never really gets away. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so the Tottenham Spurs, which is a, uh, an English soccer team, 
Uh, Delhi Delhi Alley suffers facial industry um, injuries after being robbed at gu- at knife point. Excuse me, I want to say gunpoint because I'm like, who robs people at knife point? But they don't have guns over there, so you know he's either gonna so, rob them with a small bat or a knife. So here's the thing. So not for nothing, we all in this coronavirus COVID nineteen BS. But like wearing a mask nowadays is normal, you know. So. You don't know who comes, like, i give you a prime example. I went to the store today, and I didn't know whether the girl that was sitting outside of Panera Bread was smiling at me or she wanted to curse me out. Like, I couldn't tell the difference because, obviously, you can't see because everybody's wearing a mask. Right. So, Deli Ali for the Tottenham Spurs was robbed at knife point because he wasn't 100% sure whether the person was, you know, friendly or the person really wanted to rob them. Like, he had no idea. I can't lie. If somebody tried to rob me at gunpoint. We fight. It's gonna be yeah. It's gonna be a. Little but it wasn't gunpoint. It was knife point. I mean, knife. Excuse me. Somebody tried to rob me at knife point. I, it doesn't even sound right for me to say. See, I keep saying gunpoint. It doesn't even feel right for me to say. Hey, somebody's robbing me at knife point. Like, nah. You gonna have a mean tussle, my friend. And, and you, they they say he got he got away with uh thousands thousands of dollars and us uh, thousands of pounds, which I believe that's you know. I don't know the ratio with dollars and pounds, but I know pounds is worth. They're more. higher. The, the, yeah, the, the pounds. Yeah. Are, the pounds are higher. Yeah, so he got he got robbed for a couple thousand dollars and a uh, couple thousand pounds in jewelry. No sir, no sir. He's gonna lose that <laughs> knife. He better be real good with that. He better be Wolverine with that knife if he thinks he's about to <laughs> rob me at that knife. For real, <laughs> real. So, Marcus Mack, this is going to conclude episode 40 of the EAC show. Make sure you click like, subscribe, comment on YouTube. We appreciate all the love and support, all the engagement that we're getting on social media as well. Make sure you follow us on all the social media platforms. Marcus Mack, we're 40 episodes in. Make sure you check out episode 41 on Friday. It's going to be a heavy UFC um, episode as well. Um, We didn't get a chance to say this last time, Marcus Mack. And just to bring this up, let's see if this ends up happening on these cards tonight and then on Saturday as well, that I got a little feeling from the last fight that because of the coronavirus pandemic, we're going to see a lot more punching and kicking and less grappling Grappling. because these guys don't want to grab each other. Yeah. I mean, do you think that makes sense? Yes, absolutely. I mean, they're they're in the same space. Yeah, but they're not. But when you're training, you're training to hit somebody, and you're not really training as much grabbing your training partner because of right, okay. fear. I can understand that. I can understand. So that. then, you're, why would you go into a match trying to do something that you haven't been practicing right, doing? Right, right, yeah. right, right. Did and you also, know? and also, Marcus Mack, shout out to Khabib. It was news that came across today that Khabib's dad is in serious condition. He's in a medically induced coma. So. Our thoughts and prayers are out with Khabib Magomedov, and hopefully he doesn't lose his dad. Um, and like I said, we'll definitely check you guys out. Episode 41 of the EAC Show. Marcus Mack, I appreciate you. And uh, guys, good night. I'm back. Sugar Honey Ice Tea. It's the EAC Show.